session six kubernetes installation configuration and validation we will go through uh, the steps in a broader way so that you will understand the flow what you are doing at micro level you will see the big picture here in this session that's the advantage of this lecture so installation initialize the cluster set up the pod network and validate the cluster this is what you can expect in this session install kubernetes on centos 8 or oracle linux 8 in kubernetes setup we have one master node and multiple worker nodes or minions the nodes are known as worker nodes or minions from the master node we manage the cluster and its nodes using kube admin and kubectl command kubernetes can be installed and deployed using multiple ways like one is k3s uh, which is lightweight kubernetes and where uh, ready script is available which will deploy the cluster directly in one go I don't want to do that I could have done that uh, but uh, I definitely I wanted a longer and complex way so that you have uh, more confidence in the subject so you can do single node cluster mini kube you can do kube admin with multi node cluster we are going with this and there's one more single node cluster is k3s that is called a lightweight kubernetes cluster for training purpose but we are not following the training purpose we are pre following the enterprise level installation where you can have uh, hundreds of uh, node using the same method what you have done just now there is no other way so setting the environment uh, Rithik will now understand uh, that disable SC Linux I have done for uh, server and tester one machine but Rithik has to do this manually uh, you remember it was container D1 not starting because of this only so set up the firewall rules so log into your kubernetes server master node and disable as linux with set enforce 0 and permanent setup is done in the etc as linux config file where we replace this as linux is equal to enforcing with as linux is equal to disabled then open the firewall ports we did these ports if you recollect uh, we open all the ports now in this uh, command if you see here i'm using multiple lines but it is absolutely fine if you put all the ports in a single line with the separated by comma within curly braces but point to be noted there is no space if you give any space here the command will fail it will not work so it's mandatory that uh, because curly braces actually is array representation in linux so we are using curly braces to pass multiple parameters to the same command making it as if we are giving multiple commands so we could have done it single line which is done in the lab and you can you could have done it individually one by one also and then reload the firewall then you remember we used mode probe bridge net filter to allow packet forwarding and we pass this value 1 to the proc file system which is virtual file system which is a runtime file system proc sys net bridge bridge nf call ip tables this has to have value 1 which means enable it then can local resolver and swap etc host file on the master and worker node should have the proper host name and the ip address configured which is done for you which was already available on your machine disable swap in all nodes using swap of hyphen a or remove the swap partition entries from etc fs tab file slash etc slash fs tab that's what uh, i have explained and i demonstrated configure kubernetes repository the repo file name can be anything but it has to have dot repo as an extension so this is the repository configuration where the kubernetes packages are available here and we enable we check the gpg check repository gpg check and this is the single line generally some of that you know earlier we used to have this error that participant used to put this into two lines because when i convert this into pdf this line was broken at this point and in pdf it appears as if there are two lines actually it has to be one line so this is where the screenshot is given here install kubernetes and docker or podman for that matter and the packages update 
and then install IPBS admin, IP root TC, and Kube admin to manage and start. If you are using Docker, you need to install that, but we are using Podman, so I'm not using that. Ultimately, what is important here to understand is we are using a container management system behind the screen which will use which will be used by Kubernetes. Initialize the master with kube admin init command and this is what we did kube admin init advertise IP address. Now the problem is uh, we are doing troubleshooting quite fast. You know that uh, I'm able to almost uh, point out the error right away. Why it is not magical thing. Uh, I'm not uh, doing anything uh, which is uh, a strange thing. The problem is when I was installing for the first time for my first training around two, three years back, I never used this. You will not find these commands on internet anywhere. And what was happening was the uh, first interface is loop back, second is ENP0 S3, uh, if you remember, and this interface was used. And point, very important point here is the IP address of this interface is 10.0.2.15. And the major issue was that this IP address is not reachable from any other machine. In Oracle VirtualBox, the NAT address is only for one-way traffic from computer to internet, not vice versa. This will not work. So therefore, uh, the NAT-based interface was not allowed to be available for outside connections and hence we have to specifically specify which IP address the connections will be available where the API will be available that's the reason we are specifying the static IP address 10.10.0.100 where my server API server is running and is listening on this port at port number 6443 which we opened in the firewall pod network cider block because pods which will be running inside Kubernetes, they also need to have IP address. They need to get the IP address. So from which CIDR block they will be getting the IP address? We need to specify that. Now, why this specific CIDR? Because every deployment in Kubernetes has a proper manifest file, which we will be learning from now onward in the rest of the three days what we have left with. So the manifest file have specific uh, details about this CIDR block. If you don't specify this, uh, it will assign a default one and the flannel plugin will have a different CIDR block. They may conflict. So it is better to specify that in advance. This also I was supposed to do because of the problems and error I was getting. When I uh, use this command, my problem was resolved, which in a nutshell, Bare minimum command is kube uh, admin init. This will work. But when you have first IP address as loopback or uh, NAT based, then uh, it can, you cannot have multi node cluster. Single node cluster will be fine, but you cannot have multi node cluster. Like in our case, we are creating three node cluster. And if you don't specify this, the pods and containers will not be able to communicate with the outside world because of uh, the IP address conflict or side block conflict. So therefore, these two parameters uh, make it a successful deployment. After that uh, is done, output of this command is this and the point to be noted is these three commands which you have to execute, which you already done and the join command, which is to be executed from the other nodes, from the worker nodes to make them join this cluster. Execute this command to use. So the, we are executing those three commands and then kubectl get nodes to get the status of the cluster node and you see you here uh, not ready status this not ready is because of these two pending pods you see here pending core dns is pending core dns is pending because there is no container networking uh, plugin available so there is no way that core dns can work so what is required is we need to apply a CNI plugin that is container networking interface plugin for Kubernetes. Only then this core DNS will start running and then your status will become ready. So this is the problem because of uh, the core DNS is not running. So you set up this 
pod network now. To make the cluster status ready and Kube DNS status running, deploy the pod network so that containers of different hosts communicate, can communicate with each other. Pod network is overlay network between the worker nodes. Now there are many uh, network plugins available. In this example you see Weave. We will discuss the other plugins also because we have a dedicated session on Kubernetes networking. So don't worry. We will discuss these different plugins and their features and their use cases. But here at this point in time, you should understand that yes, there are multiple plugins. Like in the lab assignment, you have used Flannel. In the presentation, I'm talking about Weave. So there are more. So we use the one which suits the best for our requirement. And this is uh, the output you can expect. Verify the master controller working. Now if you try uh, the work get node, you will see the after some time, of course, after two, three minutes, your pods, uh, your node will be in a ready state. That is what you have seen also. And I'm sure you have executed up to this point. Now going to the worker nodes, means tester one and tester two. Process is now being repeated, set and force zero, make the changes into etc sc linux sc linux these uh, settings are done in your case open the firewall reload the firewall mode probe bridge net filter send this value one to this uh, proc file system and this is the screen grab then configure repositories same command now it is revision kubernetes dot repo the content of the same and then install kubernetes and docker on the nodes in our case, we are not using Docker. I am giving you this example so that you can uh, understand that uh, whether we are using Docker or Podman, the process remains the same. So setting up the repository, installing it. So uh, lab is uh, talking about the real use case, real requirement. But presentation, I am just giving you alternative option if you want to try it at your end personally. Then the output, the join command, which was displayed uh, when we executed kube admin init command, the join command was displayed. So the join worker node to master node a token is required. Whenever Kubernetes master initialize then the output uh, we get this command. This, this is the join command if you remember. So we need to execute this command on the worker node in our case tester1 and tester2 and this is the output. Now, he, we have something very interesting observation here. And I have not deliberately removed this screenshot because this was my initial screenshot. Look at carefully here. Warning, TC not found. Second, kubelet service is enabled. Please run enable kubelet service. And then detected C group FS as Docker group control group driver. Recommended driver is system D. If you remember, we ha have uh, that installation of packages, you, you installed IPVS admin and uh, TC command. You executed and you installed that. So these two warnings will go, only the firewall related warning was displayed and that too, it was just saying that please open the ports and we open that in advance. And finally, output here is this node have joined the cluster. Now verify the cluster using kubectl command, describe nodes. These are some more commands like kubectl get nodes, uh, get pods, hyphen namespace, kube system. We will discuss uh, namespace in a dedicated lecture, so don't worry right now. Namespace, kube system, hyphen o wide, describe nodes, cluster info dump. Point to be uh, very important point here now onward will be that we have Kubernetes cluster setup and rest three days we'll be working with the Kubernetes, which we have deployed ourselves. So I'm pretty sure that you will have much more confidence when you will be working with your own Kubernetes setup, which you have created. More on tokens and nodes. By default token expires after 24 hours. So you can create again, Kube admin token create. If you don't have the value of discovery token certificate hash, you can get it by running this commands. Controlling your cluster from other machine other than the control plane. What you need to do is you need to copy this file, admin.conf. 
to wherever you want to manage okay let me put it that way Ritik has deployed kubernetes cluster on a machine running an oci can i manage that kubernetes cluster from my local machine answer is absolutely yes how will how will it work first is i need to configure this and second is i need to configure oci cli which will make api calls to the oci to manage that so this is the actually complete manifest file about your cluster in this file and this is referred by kubectl command so we have to configure this wherever you copy it you can use this with specified path like kubectl kube config file get node so it will use the cluster defined in this file and will get the details if you are giving the path of this file manually so this file is going to be very crucial moreover uh, i will give one demonstration where i will deploy a kubernetes cluster on my oracle cloud and i will configure my system to access that cluster from my local machine removing node kube admin reset and drain and if you lost the join command you can get the join command with the kube admin token create print join command this will create the join command as well <laughs> don't worry uh, watch the recording the link of the recording is available on the youtube